the parlor show is on. Hi, good evening everyone. Thank you for joining us for season 15 of The Paula Show. Tonight my guest is Mrs. Tavia Hunt and she's representing Hunt Farm. It's all about chicken on set tonight. We are raising them, preparing them for sale, seasoned or unseasoned. They can be cooked or uncooked. And we're also getting ready for a possible export business. Who knows? Think big. Entrepreneurs, think big. It's the Paula Show tonight, and we thank you again for joining us. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Thank you for staying with us on the Paula Show. Remember to watch the Paula Show via CTV Channel 2 on Tuesday nights at 9, and Sundays there's a rebroadcast at 1 in the afternoon. The Paula Show inspires, entertains, and transforms behavior. Like me as well on Facebook, The Paula Show. Watch episodes of The Paula Show via YouTube at The Paula Show TV. Tonight, my guest is Mrs. Tavia Hunt. I know you as a dancer. Yes. I know you're telling me you're a chicken farmer. <laughs> I'm still a dancer. <laughs> you're still a dancer. Yes. Thank you for joining us on Thanks The Paula Show. Thanks for having show. me, Paula. Yes. How's the dancing? Well, I have not been able to operate in my full capacity since March. Mm. Um, I still teach at the Antigua State College. I teach performing arts for CAPE. Um, my personal dance school business has been closed. I do try to keep in touch with my students via the internet, but it has its challenges. Can't you do uh, Zoom parties? I've tried all oh, of it. Zoom I've, I've done it all, the Zoom. And it's and not? The Facebook, the Instagram. It's not, not as same. effective as the person-to-person no, no. person up close. Don't worry, there might be a vaccine sometime next year. No, that's, and another we'll all, <laughs> that's another story. That's another story. To take it or not to take it. <laughs> but anyway, professional dancing, we appreciate that so much. And now you're feeding the nation. Chicken. Wow. What's going on with Who would have thought? Mm -hmm. Who would have thought you'd be doing this? Not me. Yes, Not me. <laughs> but you said that you noticed Antigans consumed a lot of chicken, so you mm -hmm. felt it might be something that well, could work. It was always something that we did for our own family enjoyment. Okay. Ma Marlon loves animal husbandry, mm. and he's always cooking something, <laughs> killing something to cook. <laughs> I don't join him in all the things that he likes I, to cook, I know, I but know. I let him have his fun. And mm -hmm. when the pandemic hit and we both lost the major sources of our income, yes. we explored different options. So I failed at farming vegetables <laughs> poorly. <laughs> I would too. I don't like mud. Yeah, and Marlon realized it wasn't going to happen for us in that department, even just for our small family. Right. So... He brought up the idea of venturing into the chicken farming business, which for me, I was not really hooray about <laughs> it at the beginning. And also because I was really so much more engrossed in what I was doing creatively mm -hmm. in my secular life. Yeah. So the idea of doing the chicken farm, I really wondered if I had the capacity to do it because mm -hmm. then I failed at the farming planting thing and i'm thinking do you really want me to go and try with chickens now <laughs> okay but um as usual i trust his leadership yeah and he trusts mine in our different capacities mm -hmm. i know that he's a sound businessman in terms of his understanding of how to take a little bit of money and make more good and for him. he's proven that ability since we were very so young you trust him so I knew that if we were to pool our resources together, it might have a winning chance. Yes. I, know, I didn't know anything about farming chicken. So this chicken. is taking a risk. A big one. Wow. Now what saved us was that it wasn't something entirely new. Mm -hmm. So we were venturing into something that we had a familiarity with. Yes. But just not on the scale on of the saying that scale. Yes. we're entering into 
poultry farming and then yes. trying to sell and yeah. advertising. So all of uh -huh. it was new in that capacity. But it might just work even better for you because I was reading some cabinet notes and it says that 50 million pounds of meat is That's imported in Antigua annually. We're talking about beef, chicken, and pork. But I can guarantee you that at least half of that might be chicken. I, I have never seen a nation of people who enjoy eating chicken as much as Antiguans. I may want to agree with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> you said that your husband was fascinated about rearing chickens and other animals. Did he try large animals and cattle and pigs no, and goats? No, I refuse. I mean, she tried to ask me if we would do a pig farm a pig. many years ago, and I said, hell no. <laughs> Why? What, you're discriminating against pigs? I, I can discriminate against anything I want, <laughs> especially when Marlon brings it up. However, <laughs> I think for me, mm -hmm. I, and it's really interesting how life comes back full circle. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, growing up in sweet, my mom really did love a lot of animals. I grew mm. up and maybe my that's cousin, why you were attracted to him. <laughs> <laughs> maybe other things, not that. <laughs> but he he loved animals and I think because of my childhood, I was surrounded by animals my entire childhood. Seriously? My cousin brought that memory back to me. She like, mm. you know what though? A lot of people laughed. <laughs> when I told them that I was going into chicken farming because they couldn't see it as yeah, a part of my persona. What was the reaction from your friend? At and, first, it was and, a and joke. At first, at first, they found it humorous, mm -hmm. and I think that is what attracted the customer, the customer interest at first, <laughs> because it was oh, I dance to turn chicken farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how this you is going to know. work. Let's see how long this is and going to last. It was so funny because um, a lot of older persons, when mm -hmm. they called in to find out about the business, they're like, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> like she has a real job now. She's like she has a real job now. <laughs> what is that? She's getting her hands dirty for real. <laughs> um, it's been a mixture. But I think a lot of persons know that anytime I put my mind to doing yes. something, mm -hmm. it has to be done well. And I think mm -hmm. this is the part of what my discipline has been all my years in performing arts, dance, it's about presentation, people. So I was going to ask you that, what, 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 what are the lessons, what are the, well, the, the characteristics that you take from dancing into? That is where I found the gap to fill. Mm. There was an empty space when I couldn't perform, interact with my students, mm -hmm. because you remember my dancing is a service. Yes. It's not really just about the glitz and glamour. It's about me impacting the lives of my students, sharing with them, helping the parents to raise them, give them something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And when that wasn't happening anymore, I went in a little bit of a depression. Oh. And so when I realized this thing was really going to last longer than a month, longer than two months, mm -hmm. um, I had to transfer my energy. And that is what meaningful. I use mm -hmm. to attract customers now. So then I had to learn how to make flyers. I had to download app because I couldn't afford a graphic artist. And then every time I showed Marlon one of my artwork, his critiques <laughs> were not really <laughs> happening for me. He was so annoying. <laughs> and then lately he's like, why you improve man? You look good now. <laughs> But at first, he had too many issues, yes. you know, with my effort. He just wanted you to, to grow, develop, and, and be your best. Well, I think so. And I think that one of the things he did was say to me, um, you can't sell 200 chicken. <laughs> you, you can't sell 200. He did He you. did me. Who tell him to do that? Exactly. I went and oversold by 100. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever dare me. Don't. Don't do that. I showed him and I showed him mm -hmm. a little bit too well. And he was impressed. He was impressed and he was upset because now I forced him to do more work than he anticipated. <laughs> what? Because we had to meet the customer's demand. Uh -huh. You understand? I don't think he or I were prepared for the, the influx of interest yes, so kind of quickly. Overwhelming at first. It was overwhelming in a good way because, like you said, Antigua imports a lot of chicken. Again, 
50 million pounds of meat, beef, chicken, pork. It didn't categorize, but I can bet you that chicken constitute the largest percentage of this 50 million. I want to believe that. Um, one of the reasons why we had an experience with understanding a little bit about it mm -hmm. was because Marlon didn't like the imported meat anymore. Okay. And we had a concern, you know, watching family members. So many of our close friends died from all kind of complicated illnesses related to how they ate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we learn about hormones in food and the genetically mm -hmm. modified food. And it's in our vegetables too. So, I mean, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we were encouraged to do backyard farming and all mm -hmm. of that. So, I think the whole idea for us, for me personally, is that I did a scan mm -hmm. and just to think, okay, how many poultry farmers are there? How many egg farmers are there in Antigua? And when I went online, I didn't really find a lot. Not to say they don't exist, but what? I was kind of shocked that the resource was so little. Maybe people are not documenting or they're not utilizing. Not marketing and branding. They're not, and right, yeah. in this particular way that mm -hmm. I try to do because Again, the idea of farming and farmer, it's like you're behind the scenes all the time. Mm -hmm. You just go, you work, you go, you sell your vegetables early in the morning, and then everybody shows up when you're gone, and only the people who are into that. Yeah. And I think in our demographic age-wise, we never saw farming as an attractive area oh, no. to venture into. No, no, you understand? no. It's hard so, work and you're right. not making money and it's a lot of sun and thought, yes. cleaning poop and all of it. It's, it's, it's not attractive. It's yeah. not. And um, on, for me, I learned something when I was cleaning the chicken, the water. Uh, and in the mornings, I'm responsible for... Well, I have been promoted. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> tell us a little bit more about your promotion in the <gasps> next segment because I don't understand how someone wasn't at first interested in this chicken farming <laughs> and four months, five months into this and you were promoted. Marlon promoted me. <laughs> I got a new position this when morning. Husbands <laughs> promote us, when husbands promote us, we have to be here for <laughs> this, setting us up for something. Thank you for staying with us on the Paula Show. We'll be right back. You were telling me your husband promoted you just this morning. Yes, I didn't realize it was a promotion until I was in the pen by myself. <laughs> in the past, what happened? Well, in the past, the system is, he wakes me up. What? A at half an hour before the time for me to actually get up. So we up at six. Wow. So he has to start waking me up a good 45 minutes before <laughs> that. I actually move. I know. When I'm going to walk, I start my alarm an hour ahead. Yes. Yes. And then I'm not an early sleeper, so you know, yes. I need to push. So he is the man in charge. So we know when, we know when who is leading. Okay. And in that regard, I follow. And so... He tells me what to do. He gets the feed because it's a good distance. You know, we have yeah. to walk to the pens. And okay. So I have to go turn on the water. He takes the water out. He leaves me to wash up. So I have to wash the water and make sure they're clean, especially... These when waterers the are what the chicken. They drink their water drink. from. At the time, we didn't have automatic waterers. So okay. it was a lot of manual labor. Wow. And when the chicks are small, everything has to be sanitized a lot. So you don't, well, for us, we don't reuse, we don't leave the water in the pen like two days. Every morning it has to be fresh and I have to clean them and he's very, any, the word, he's any very, little he's, infection it can he cause the entire. Right, yeah. and he's very anal about that. So <laughs> he would sometimes bark at me and I'd cut up my eyes and then I would stop doing what I do and I'd stand up and stare at him like a queer <laughs> talk to the talk to me. So, and you know, we would carry on. He would ignore me a lot of the time, but he left me to do that for a long time and yeah. then, um, and in the process of me wetting up myself and hose flying up in my face and he would pretend so like he don't morning. see because I'm having all these accidents and he's pretending like he's not noticing because you know but he's supposed to be guiding you well he's busy doing his chores and he leaves me to do mine so you you're baptized by fire <laughs> <Blood> <laughs> water. 
So tell me about the promotion. So me I did, I'm getting there. So uh -huh. this has become my routine, you know. Yeah. So he knows. Oh, you have to go to the door, open the door so I can go in. And then sometimes and I have to wait outside so out. they don't come yeah. outside because uh -huh. I can't catch no fall if they run away. <laughs> It's too much drama. You still try to oh, be God. awakened. And sometimes I'm just not in the mood, you know? Yeah, yeah. So this is an everyday thing? Every single morning. Wow. Every single morning. Monday to Sunday. That's a commitment. Yes. It's been a real life, life cycle, a life change for me. Uh -huh. And so yesterday, he, I went down. I know what I'm supposed to do now, so nobody has to tell me anything. Very good. I go to my station and I uh -huh. stand up with the hose and I put the hose in the thing. Nice. And on and he's feeling good. And then That's he an gave me. So we have a f we we have a bat that is slaughtered. Mm -hmm. So we have to clear the pens and whatever. But we also have a new bat with babies that are going that to mature in it by the time the next batch. So uh -huh. we're trying to keep them in closer proximity so we can have for the demand right. quicker. Mm -hmm. And so that morning, he said to me, um, carry the food into this pen where the little the chicks are and whatever. They're so cute. And he made me, you know, make sure your shoes, take clean your shoes and da 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 because everything mm -hmm. has to be Low sanitized. Infection. Yes. So I went in and I did what I did and I noticed he didn't come to check. He always check in to see if I do something <laughs> properly, you know. But it's no, an investment. He has. Yes. You well, have to I, be I realize that. That's why I try yeah. to behave and you know don't be rude <laughs> on the job. You might get fired <laughs> instead. You were promoted. <laughs> so <laughs> I noticed he didn't come to check Good for to you. see. So I thought, oh, okay, maybe he have something to do. Yes. So this morning, when we got up, he said, um. You go and take care of the, the, the little ones and I will deal with the big pen oh and whatever. God. And then I peep out the, the thing because you, you can see outside. Uh -huh. I look up and I see Bassman gone. He wait and left me. Yes, because you can now manage the role. He didn't come in once. He only came by the door to help something with the water. And, and then an he went away job. and did his business. So I was like, oh. So this they is going know. to be me every morning. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's it. From the word, you are your own. I clearly, I really but, realize but, but that. Honestly, when somebody who's as anal as him, as you said, and who's committed to excellence, he is. right? He really is. And he's allowing you to operate on your own, consider that a huge, huge honor. Well, I thought so. And I understand the chickens can drown even right there. You in yes, the, the little ones. Yes. They behave like wild children, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they flutter and yeah. sometimes they, they climb upon each other. And if you're not strong enough, you might get crushed. Wow. You know, because I look at them and I often see us. Yes, children. The way how animals yeah. congregate. Mm -hmm. And COVID has brought this whole nature full full fledged for me mm -hmm. like seeing life through nature how we yes. are as people mm -hmm. it's really amazing i was told that your husband is very particular about his chicken and even if you didn't mention it on set tonight i heard about it the chickens have fan I am so hot sometimes. The sun is so hot. I am hot. I am perspiring. <laughs> and I have to make do with what I have. Well, and I understand that he's so concerned about the chicken that he installed fans. Yes. Isn't that a little bit too much? Well, I don't think so. I, I want to believe that farmers um, who really have the money to, to do that sort of infrastructure, I don't think it's unique to the farming business. Okay. But for me, it was hilarious at first because I'm like, you give the chicken and a fan? <laughs> and then the neighbor say, what? I upper class fold them, your man, they fold them, thing. <laughs> and he did It that. might be a soon. Well, listen, don't put anything past Marlon. <laughs> but one of the reasons the fans are used is one, yeah. to keep the pen dry. Because dry. when the, when, the cool. when they, well, it keeps it dry because mm -hmm. the sawdust that they use, and we use the deep litter system. Oh, okay. And so they don't walk on fence. They walk on the soft to so use the, um, the sawdust. Yes. And it needs to stay as dry as possible okay. because then gotcha. if it gets wet, wet bacteria, yes, you understand? Yes, yes, yes. And then the, the fowls, they get hot. 
Mm. So they could die from heat stroke. And on those days when it's very, very, very hot. Like several then, weeks ago. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you see them start, they, they panting like that. You, yeah. you know, you're going to know that well, they're extra hot. There. Yes. So now like they actually sweat. So they drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And when they go through 50 gallons of water, they, I mean, it's a lot. So the fans help to keep them cool, but it also helps to keep the floor from being too sappy and wet and then with the water well, sometimes they do throw it away sometimes the pipe might come out it might wet it up so these are some of the wow. other challenges and they have, they have lights as well in the night um when they're younger yes you, you put extra light in the pen so that for them to see for them to stay warm oh especially the little ones as right, they, because they, they're when not they're in the with their mom's stage, it's beneath the they, mom's they, they have to um, yes. bundle together so to so stay warm. The temperature has to be just you right. You have to keep a temperature, a certain temperature for them so that they don't get too cold. They could die that way too. This sounds really technical. It's like raising a child, honestly. It's very delicate. It's like re rearing a child, but hear this. <laughs> At least it's one child. <laughs> you have Hundreds, hundreds of children. Hundreds of children. And have to get up at six Every to morning. hear that sound. And <laughs> After and, uh, a while, you get accustomed to it. I mean, at first. Just like you got accustomed to dancing. Well, I, I listen, I was born to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for staying with us on the Polish show. Even if she's now a chicken farmer, she's still holding dear yes. to her dancing. We'll be right back. Stay with us, please. It's season 15 of The Paula Show, and we're speaking with Tavia Hunt tonight, and it's all about chicken farming. And of course, you know, she has to tell us a little bit about dancing. Dancing <laughs> is in your DNA. In it, your... When did you yeah. start to dance? When? Yeah. I think At I what was, age? I think I was dancing from before I knew I was dancing. Um, oh. I officially joined Vaughan Stout Dance Group when I was 16, which was late. Which was late, yes, because I see but children the, dancing at 3 and yes. 4 and 5. I was dancing, but for me, it was at parties. Yes. It was following my bigger sister to her dance class. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I didn't even think it was anything I was trying to do. I just loved it so it's much. It's natural. You know, but when I met the dancers at Vaughan Stout Dance School, my God, I can't even say how long ago. Um, that was what, that turned on the light. And I was like, wow, things like this in Antigua? Sometimes okay. Sometimes I see your girls dancing and I say, no, this is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> no. You need to try it, Paula. Me? Yes, don't be judgmental. Oh, now. no, I don't know, I don't know. Trust me, it will Tell change me. your life. I, Charles, it will be a happier husband oh no You'll we need to stop happier. there and return to chicken and hormone free You'll be fitter. <laughs> stop <laughs> behave yourself on the polar show i might just take you up on your offer don't Please. dare me don't dare me you can bring charles <laughs> they're yes. hormone free Mm -hmm. You're not cutting any corners. Marlon and I decided we would say hormone free, not that we're advertising organic chicken. Now, yes. depending on what people are familiar with, sometimes we're triggered by our experiences. So we've always heard about organic versus organic, injected yes. chicken. Mm -hmm. So if a chicken is not being injected, then you would want to think it's organic. organic. Um, so. If you want to get very technical and very yes. scientific about it, mm -hmm. you can draw the lines. Many, yes. many, many, many lines. Yes. We're not interested in that. Yeah. Antigua is a very small market, and uh, we just wanted to provide a service that made our clients feel like More healthy. we're trying. Mm -hmm. We're trying to give them a better option. Yes. Why not eggs? Well, I did a feasibility um, study. little study. Mm -hmm. It wasn't massive, but I have a little bit of understanding about it. So when I did my research, I realized that there were, yes, poultry farmers, and there's a, an association, oh. but I already, I'm in the market, I'm a consumer. Mm -hmm. So every time I go to any supermarket in Antigua, I could always find locally raised eggs. And oh, this is something that I've seen increase over the years. Mm -hmm. I would all, and I am happy because I would always buy that over the American Importing. imported eggs. So mm -hmm. I said to Marlon, let's not reinvent the wheel. He agreed. I said, we want to become a part of a market. 
if you really want to have an edge, you can't go selling the same t-shirt like the vendor next to you. Everybody, exactly. ten of us selling the same t-shirt. We only have you so have many customers that want the same mm -hmm. t-shirt. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's, let's join the fraternity. Mm -hmm. We don't have to come and try to do something that's already mm -hmm. being done. So um, we agreed and I think we made a good choice because the interest keeps growing every month. I'm so and happy for you. Yeah, and I see a lot of prospects for us. Praise the Lord. And maybe that's why you said dreams come to us in packages that we do not recognize. I like that. Yeah, um, that is something like a very big lesson mm -hmm. that I've learned in this experience because trust me, if I had to make a choice A and B. I wouldn't choose chicken farming under regular circumstances. <laughs> Neither would I. Would I would not even been interested. Something you know? more glamorous, right? Well, I don't like to be in a box. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm creative. I'm mm -hmm. creatively inspired. Mm -hmm. So you talk about the routine of doing the same thing the same Six time every day, yes. every month. Put on I'm the same shoes. That. Pick up the same buckle from the same place. <laughs> so, <laughs> You same know, boots. the same boots. <laughs> to me, that mm -hmm. would not have fit my regular thinking yes. pattern. What I realized, though, is that COVID is bringing me around to a full balance. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I have all this splash, and I'm dramatic, and the drama, and the love of, and all of that. But now, I'm able to now come into another type of Settle discipline. into a routine. Well, it's a balance, because mm -hmm. I'm never going to not be Tavia, yes. the son. But you settle into that routine, and then on the other hand, you still maintain. I have Tavia, to be true the teacher. because Tavia, the teacher, yeah. the dancer, is not a fake. It's multifaceted. It's, it's my. Mm -hmm. It's who I am, mm -hmm. and so I. And this is one lesson I learned. You don't have to. You know, we're very dual. Mm -hmm. We we're all about duality. Mm -hmm. We always believe you have to be yes or no. But you can be both. You can be yes when it's necessary, and you can be no when it's mm -hmm. necessary. You can't have the sun without the moon. Mm -hmm. If you have too much sunshine, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. So for me, now that I've stepped into this new discipline, this new phase of operating that I'm still learning, yes. it doesn't mean that I no longer need to be Tavia the dancer. Yeah. Tavia the dancer is a chicken you can farmer. compartmentalize. They're both here, 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 and they all make a, a total whole. person. And yeah. that, that's been... So I thought... One thing Marlon and I always talked about, we both came from families that did their best. Mm -hmm. But we didn't come from wealthy families. Yes. I do believe that each generation should be more equipped than the past to advance into this world. Make a better living, improve the quality of your life. And the way you can do that is by sheer determination, and you have to try and be certified. I have a bachelor's because I wanted to have a say. I wanted to have an influence mm -hmm. to help guide the minds or show yes. the minds that mm -hmm. make the platform. It can be done this way. And sometimes you have to speak to people in their language. Yes. So if you want to be a board member, you have to have what it takes to be a board member. Listen, and if that comes with certain things. It depends on where, it depends on your journey. I agree. And for me, my journey is toward a particular place, that place that I am aiming to reach, you definitely need higher education. Well, I think higher education comes in all shapes and forms. It does. I think what I'm doing now with this learning, learning is higher you, education. It is higher education <laughs> because I didn't know anything much about it now. And then now I find myself asking questions, yes. um, paying attention more. At first, it was a troops up. Man, I have to do this thing again. Mm -hmm. I'm tired now and whatever. But, but now, now you're growing. I'm growing in it because mm -hmm. I'm seeing that Marlon is making so much sacrifice. He's so disciplined in his... He's getting up and he's putting out. And I'm here as his partner. I can't let that fall. So I brought my strength to so the table. To and I have to make it work. So my strength is utilizing the same skills I have used in my performing arts career. Mm -hmm. Charisma. My ability to interact with others. So you're the, you're, you're the, you're the branding. I'm the branded the personality. I do yes. all of that. Mm -hmm. And it has been working because a lot of the customers that we would have started off with they would have you. been people who mm -hmm. knew me. And so, mm -hmm. Tavia, you have given so much 
of yourself in this area, we're happy to support so you. So you haven't come back. danced in vain. People already know you. Absolutely. So you already have a brand. Absolutely. So it was just so easy to transfer that brand. It was easy into to transfer this business it. Yes. And expand. Yes, yes. Because it wasn't it wasn't when I was well, I'm still dancing, but when I was in full fledged all these decades doing mm -hmm. what I'm doing, it was about impacting people. Right. It was about connecting with them mm -hmm. and making them feel good about themselves and making yes. their children happy. So now that I have stepped out of my comfort zone, the zone that is just natural for me, people respect the fact that I can be this flexible yes. and that I could take off my shoes and my hat and put on something else and not be skinning up about it, not feeling like it's a burden. I don't feel like mm -hmm. this is a burden anymore. But I can tell you one thing. I the hardest work me ever do in my <laughs> life. Harder than dancing? Oh gosh. <laughs> 20,000 times harder than dancing, Paula. Wow, you're turning me off. I'm never going to be a chicken farmer. Just the, and the manual labor alone, like feeding them and watering them is the easy part. But you see, when you have to do that, and remember, we're growing now, we're yes. starting off, so we don't have the fancy machinery, we don't have the infrastructure. And you don't have the, the the human resources we don't have we don't you have, have to do those it on your own. so we're starting from the bottom and i'm telling you the first time we did a full fledged it was about maybe 200 and something we started and wow. i had to with my team we had to pluck and clean i was numb from my hair end to the tip of my last toenail parlor it was i felt like someone took a knife and just ran it through my muscles like Every uh, part of my body ached. was in pain. It was, I felt like my nerves were shot. Oh my. And so that is when I had you to make the decision. Chicken? No, I don't do the killing. Oh. That's all Marlon's work. <laughs> That's Marlon's job. I was just me, about to ask you to leave the border <laughs> show. No murderers on set. Probably have to go some guts for glory, man. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us on the Paula Show. Chicken farming, lots of work, but at the end of the day, it's their business and they're growing this business for future generations to manage. You said you have a bigger vision. What's that bigger vision? Here to share? Yes. Um, I see the Hunt Farm brand becoming a legacy. Mm. Something that, I like that Antigua can say it's there. Something mm. that branded Antiguans yes. by Antiguans mm -hmm. for everyone. Yes. And I also see this as the beginning of a generational wealth experience mm -hmm. where you have a business, mm -hmm. but that business is serving your community in a way yes. that builds the whole you economy, the country in your on a bigger level. You train people. Mm -hmm. and and, 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 and your yeah. children learn the importance, the art of sticking with something, seeing mm -hmm. it through, improving it, yes. carrying it to the next level, keeping doors open. So it's about satisfying the needs your customers, of your existing and potential Very, customers. very important. And mm -hmm. this is where I saw the loophole. So Hunt Farm doesn't just want to be, oh, we raise chicken, any old how, mm -hmm. we slaughter any old how, mm -hmm. and we give them to our customers. Mm -hmm. I want to see, like, a, like Purdue. I want to see Hunt Farm. Nice, nice. You know, You're competing on a global scale. So, you know what, Paula? It's I don't possible. mean to dim down my aspirations. Yes. But I want to satisfy antique. I want to dance a yard properly before yes. you go abroad. <laughs> you said you called a few supermarkets yes. in order for them to sell your, your, your chicken. That was an interesting experience because... Mm -hmm. Here it is, I thought, okay, this is a good um, product, it's hormone free, mm -hmm. people would want to know that it's a healthier option, but most of the supermarkets, <laughs> I think I might have called four of them, Wow! and three out of the four were not really interested, because one, the price is not competitive enough, because okay. the imported chicken is, is way Less cheaper, but enough. then because it, it's mass production, yes. so where you can get a tray wing, you know how much chicken I have to kill to get a trail That's wing true. and then why would we have a part? You know, <laughs> we're not produced. We'd have to be yes. turning over by the thousands, mm -hmm. tens of thousands to be able to fulfill that need. And then another another proprietor said, Auntie, you can take a flower, then local yeah. people flower, then I want a yard fowl. 
And but at least you know how the yard fall leads. But it's not yard fall. But again, it goes back to what people's experience is. If you're mm -hmm. not really aware or you don't understand mm -hmm. what it is, you're going to go back to what you know. Yard fowl is a very tough animal. <laughs> it's hard. You're offering a healthier <laughs> option. Why we would sell broiler chickens, mm -hmm. which the meat is broiler tender, yeah. it's soft. And because they're not growing to a very old stage, you know, they, they mm -hmm. are slaughtered at the matured stage, which is about six to seven weeks. Mm -hmm. So you, the meat is nice, nice. and tender. You yes. can, like butter, knife to butter, you know. Um, and so when you tell people it's local, I guess they're thinking, like the one that used to eat stone and rock, and that roam, run out roam, of the house. And around that thing. the house. No, and, it's and, not yeah. that. It's, it's, it's it's specifically just like you have layers for eggs, mm -hmm. boilers are really for meat consumption. So I feel and like they're contained in a in a space. Well they're not left to roam. Well, the free range mm -hmm. when they roam and eat the grass, when you can mm -hmm. let them out, that is really the best option for the chicken. Okay. Because it's like letting a child out to play fresh mm -hmm. air. They eat the grass mm -hmm. and so on. Everything natural. Everything more natural. It's healthier mm -hmm. for the birds. But then mm -hmm. we had to be really sensible. We have neighbors. And also okay. our yard is really only so big. Yes. So we they have a larger, larger pens. We, we built larger pens mm -hmm. that they can move around. We add grass to their diet. Mm -hmm. But we have wild dog, neighbor dog, mongoose. mongoose. We can't put, our Probably we can't put them at risk. Oh, yes, ones. rats, everything. So we can't leave them open to that now when we expand. Do you think at some point that you, you'll be able to move, oh, relocate from the neighborhood absolutely. and have a space where you can expand your business? Absolutely. You said something earlier about imported chicken costing less. Yeah. That, that, that is the Are you, do you think that you might be pricing yourself out the market then? Not particularly. In, in, within the local market, mm -hmm. no. We're okay. basically what the market price is. Yeah. We're there. Um, and it's hard for farmers. Getting yeah. the feed is a challenge. Mm. Um, you know, what you have to spend daily. Yes. You can't really go below a certain price because then you're not going to be making anything. And so that does not make a wise business experience, you right, know. Right. So one of the edge that we have, though. So there's a minimum price. Yes. Mm -hmm. And six dollars, I think, would be about the minimum. Just mm -hmm. like I think ten dollars, ten to twelve dollars is the is the price range for the egg. Mm -hmm. Now, if a farmer wants to compete and come selling his eggs for six dollars, yes, they will sell. <laughs> but he might not be able to buy back the bird. <laughs> All the boxes. All the, the boxes egg. for that. <laughs> um, and we're still learning. We're still mm -hmm. learning about the business. We're still learning about being better business people. The entrepreneurship yes. journey is mm -hmm. new for me. And I must say, so many other entities and organizations have opened up their doors to me, mm -hmm. reached out to me, mm -hmm. applauded the effort that I really mm -hmm. feel like maybe I was being prepared for this all my life because we've always dreamed of being... A, a, a family with a legacy self that self-sufficient, mm -hmm. teach our children how to stand up, be strong, yes. make their own. And I thought that dancing was going to be the avenue, the only avenue mm -hmm. that I was going to do this in. And the creator, the universe has offered me and another what opportunity. An irony. Very much so. A virus. Made me a chicken farm. A bad situation. Turn into something like Turn this. into something beautiful. Well, I, I wouldn't use the word beautiful, great. <laughs> <laughs> because of all the excitement beautiful that goes that, along beautiful with this. A, a beautiful is a chicken. Chicken. Great. A beautiful. Great. So we say a great. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fun on the Paula Show tonight. Talking about chicken farming with uh, Mrs. Tavia Hunt. We'll be right back. Stay with us, please. <laughs> We're at the stage now where you're going to tell me how well you season these chicken. Oh, wow. Yes, because I hear that you have a signature season and the signature, not only a signature seasoning, but signature barbecue, signature sauces. 
What's going on with you? Couldn't you stop it? Just check it? Well, because we're creative. <laughs> okay, you've said that. Yes. It has to be a production. <laughs> I, you know? <laughs> no, it's not like a dance production, is no, it? No, but it's a chicken production. <laughs> <laughs> so why stop at the chicken when you can introduce other segments? Well, we had to come different. Yeah. And uh, again, Marlon is a very innovative person. Mm -hmm. And he... He does have some talent. He has talent for fixing things, but he also has talent to create things. Mm. And so That's he likes great. cooking. It's, it's something that he enjoys doing. But okay. I noticed since COVID. Do you cook? I am very good at cooking too. Oh, so two but cooks. I noticed during since COVID, I've been cooking more and more and more and more. <laughs> and he's cooking less and less and yes, less and less. because he's taking care of the chickens even more than you do. Before the chickens do the trick. <laughs> you guys might have a restaurant soon. We've tried that business before and it failed. <laughs> <laughs> you were ahead of me. You were ahead of me. <laughs> what attracted you to him? He, had, he was cute in school. He was a cute guy. <laughs> also, you were, you were looking at the external, not realizing that the internal had so much more to offer. Well, when, when, when you're that young, internal, you look at that important. <laughs> All you look at. He's cute. Oh, he's, he's cute. He's cute. Yes, he's handsome. You know. Got you. Got so, you. So, you know. But we, we've, we've been together since we were young. Yeah. In high school. You guys are old? Well, we're not so old. But we're not <laughs> as young as we used to be. <laughs> you know where this is going now? To romance. Oh, Let's stay with chicken. Stick to the chicken. Chicken in, chicken in the bag. Definitely. Seasoning the chicken in the bag. So, he came up with yeah. the hunt sauce. It's nice. not a barbecue sauce per se, mm -hmm. but because it doesn't have mesquite in it, so it, it's not, it doesn't have that acidic okay. um, yes. aftertaste. But the base is tomatoes, mm -hmm. and so it has a long um, shelf, shelf life. life. Yes. And I think it's about a year or so it could stay wow. on the shelf before you need to um, like throw Do it out. Do you realize this is another avenue for export, but go ahead. That we can see as an avenue <laughs> for export, um, and so... These are all things he created. I won't mm -hmm. take any credit. Yes. Because honestly, I just taste and say, oh, it is good. The seasoning as well. He, he came up the with seasoning. the blend. Oh, so nice. our seasonings do not have MSG in them. Mm -hmm. So the do blend of seasoning, not yet. Um, what we do, we use that for to our chicken. chicken. So that's yes. the signature flavor mm -hmm. that has captured our customers. Mm. And so again, we are accustomed to barbecue chicken in Antigua. It's either fried or barbecued or mm. baked, right? Mm -hmm. um, the how we prepare the chickens is that it's smoke cooked. But when mm. we said smoke, people thought we meant the dried out smoke meat that you get in the supermarket, the frozen one. Mm -hmm. It's moist, it's juicy, Sumptuous. it's beautiful looking, it has a lovely color. I'm going to have some of that. And the aroma alone. Ooh. I'm addicted to my own chicken. It's just delicious. <laughs> <laughs> what else would you say? <laughs> what else would you say? <laughs> if you no. said anything else, I would wonder, wait, what is wrong with her? That's you know, not how could you be selling something she doesn't like? Um, What's your most popular option? The cooked, smoke cooked. Uncooked, the smoke, smoke cooked. Mm. I can't sell enough of it. Smoked cooked. Monthly. Yes, it's becoming very popular. Can we purchase the smoked cook and freeze it and use it whenever, at all convenience? Um, of course, and mm. this is also feedback that we've gotten from our other customers. Yes. So you do receive it ready to eat box. Mm -hmm. You can freeze it and you can reheat it the next day. Okay. It's absolutely delicious. It's like the aroma goes to another level, the mm. seasoning goes that much more into the bone. And it's really, really nice. And you have to order it. You have to pre-order. Because again, we can only raise so many chickens. We can only slaughter so many with the manual. And right labor. now you're smoking and slaughtering. And, Seasoning. And, and, and you've exceeded demand. You don't have sufficient for your, your customers. No. So what's going to happen? I need to get a larger piece of property. <laughs> <laughs> I need some machine <laughs> to work. Don't worry, we're speaking about Hunt's Farm on the yes. Porter Show tonight yes. and I'm sure yes. there's some investors thinking, hmm, that's an avenue that I don't mind exploring. 
I'm going to give Tavi a call. What's your number? 727-3912. 727-3912. You said life takes a curve. Trust the process. And this will reduce the risk of thwarting major opportunities. Is this your message to entrepreneurs or just to people in general? I think in general. And I think that my story, the Mines and Marlin, mm -hmm. is one that we would consider a curveball in the sense the pandemic was our curveball. Mm -hmm. And then coming out of our comfort zones, taking on a huge responsibility as this. The blessing in that is uh, we have such an opportunity to break yeah. a barrier. Mm -hmm. You can call it a curse if you want. Mm. Build something that can last. Build something that could be there even when you're no longer there. Mm -hmm. um, establish something that can be memorable for establish all time. A establish a legacy. Our people, our color, we, we, we tend to not be able to continue that. But it is being done. Mm -hmm. We have too many examples. But our psyche tells us that we're always the worker. We're always the slave. We're always the one getting the crumbs off the table. But why not build a table and eat at it? You know, and why this not is, bake the bread? Why not? Why not go to wheat? <laughs> you that know, too. and so we're trying to rewrite a script. Everything that my husband ever brought to our home is something that he worked for. So we mm -hmm. we've never been beneficiaries of handouts and parents left us with this and that. We're not and upset. And you're teaching your children these values as well. And not only your children, but your students. Everywhere, Everyone everyone. You know, by your it's life. okay to start from the bottom. And, it, yeah. and I feel it's not about the end. It's about enjoying the process step the by step. Along yes, the way. Yes, because... Cry if you have laugh, to. Laugh, cry if you fail have Fail if you to. have to. Fail. But don't stay down. I, and this Rise is what up. the chicken farm yes. taught us. It manifested because we decided we weren't going to stay down. Your experience is reminding me about a parable and it speaks about the mustard seed being very small but then it grows into one of the largest trees of nature and it provides shade for the birds and the animals and even for people. So Hunt Farm is like that mustard seed and as it grows it is going to provide opportunities for many people in Antigua and Barbuda. I agree with you, Paula. Yes. One thing that happened with COVID, too, in terms of partnership, we're not going into intimacy now, okay? So mm -hmm. I'm not, okay. don't, don't, don't <laughs> take your mind there. <laughs> okay, I'm still with the chicken farm. You like intimacy. We just I talking love about intimacy. the chicken farm. I love intimacy, <laughs> but we'll stay with the chicken farm. To, and to add to what we're talking about in yes. terms of building and growing and making shades for others. Marlon and I are two very independent people. I established myself independently in our marriage. Mm -hmm. And he is a man, so he knows that he has to be independent because yes. that's just how men are when they want to function in their capacity as providers, mm -hmm. caretakers, protectors, and so on. But independently, we mm -hmm. did well for ourselves. Yes. And uh, together, this is the first time our talents and our abilities mm -hmm. have actually married mm -hmm. wholesomely. Yes. And now I'm seeing the fruits of when that comes together. Collaboration. The collaboration of mm -hmm. your partner's strength and your strength. Knowing when to follow, knowing when to be led, <laughs> knowing when to not follow. <laughs> knowing when to say enough is enough. Enough is enough. <clears throat> but what this has done for me is that I am realizing that the bigger lesson behind of this too is that accomplishing this yes. can never be a one-man job. Yes. The mustard seed going into a tree, that has to happen when people come together. Yes. Not just them as partners, but the people who come and work with us. I mm -hmm. mean, you're talking about 17 hours of labor, sometimes 18 hours parlor. Sometimes we're up at 6 a.m. Consistently. When we're doing the slaughtering and the cleaning and the plucking and the, all of that. Sometimes, I mean, last night we left 
our establishment at midnight and I still had to drop home my my ladies. So and they come back the mm. next day with limping foot But they're ready up. to work. They smile but they're smiling, they were you know, we laughing, we cracking mm -hmm. jokes. And I say to them, although we only do this once monthly, this mm -hmm. hard labor thing, I still look forward to the joy, the camaraderie, <laughs> because then you know, I have to come and say, lad, I had enough chicken. Wow, good do. But plucking chicken doesn't itch? No. No, it doesn't itch. No. Okay. It, it hurts your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. And your arms. <laughs> I don't want to feel achy at the end of the porno show. Oh, I'm Lord. going to leave that alone. But, but I, I think in time to come, <coughs> mm -hmm. we will be able to look back and say that this is where we started. And then mm -hmm. we'll be able to be at a different level in the business where yes. we won't have to break a You're sweat. We just have to manage. The chief financial officer. Yes. And you just manage the Manage, business. give people jobs, you know. And, mm -hmm. and so this is the bigger dream, a dream that I didn't thought I would be dreaming. Mm -hmm. But one that I'm willing to accept and take on. And if this is what is designed for me to fulfill as part of my contribution, I'm willing to do it. Excellent. And on that note, we're going to bring the Polish show tonight to a close. Tavia Hunt, I am so happy that you have accepted our invitation and you've brightened my set tonight <laughs> with your smile, with your optimism, with your enthusiasm. Thank you. I'm impacted. And I know that my audience who's watching the program tonight has felt your energy and some entrepreneur tonight that was about to give up. Don't give up. Will. Learn from your experience. Yes. And decide it's worth making that extra effort. It is. Yes. Thank you very much for watching The Paula Show. It was our pleasure having you with us tonight. Have a good evening. Goodbye.